Hello, gentlemen. Welcome to our video on section 2.6 on ionization energy. Now, in class, we said that ionization energy can be defined as the energy required to remove a valence electron from an atom. When this is done, we create an ion. So ionization energy can be broken down in this way. The energy required to create an ion. An ion is created when you remove an electron or an atom gains an electron, so a charged atom. Now, the ease at which a valence electron is removed depends on the size of the atom. The size of the atom is called your atomic radius. Now today, we're going to observe the elements on the periodic table and see some trends in ionization energies and atomic radii. I'm going to talk about some of those trends you may see as you look at the periodic table. First, as you travel down a group, remember groups are our columns. As you travel down a given group, you'll see these things. First, an increase in principal energy levels. What I mean by that is this. If you look at the periodic table here, as you go down, sorry, as you go down the group here, you increase in principal energy level. You increase in your energy level in general. So I know I'm, I wasn't, <clears throat> we usually don't use the Bohr model anymore, but for demonstration purposes, I'm going to use it now. So as I go down a group, I have my first energy level, then my second energy level, my third energy level, my fourth energy level, fifth energy level, et cetera, et cetera. So as you go down a group, you increase the principal energy level as far as the elements you're going through. And that's demonstrated here. As you go down a group, you increase in principal energy level. When that happens, you have an increase in your inner number of electrons. Remember, in one group, we have the same number of valent electrons. So the only thing that can change is your number of inner electrons. So I'm going to arbitrarily just draw some inner electrons here. And I'll have some more on that side too, but I'm just going to draw some little dots here representing my inner electrons. These inner electrons shield the valence electrons from the nucleus. So here, all my valence electrons here at the bottom, V sub or VE minus. These inner electrons that are located inside and between the valence electrons and the nucleus act as a shield. So I can draw like a little shield here. They kind of shield these electrons from the nucleus. And what that results in is this. So the effective nuclear charge, which is the pull that the negatively charged electrons feel from the positively charged nucleus, is less on the valence electrons. So valence electrons are held less tightly. These electrons here are valence electrons. They feel some pull from the nucleus because they're negative. The nucleus is positive. They're feeling some pull, but not nearly as tightly as the electrons that come before it. These electrons that are here are shielding these electrons from feeling the pull from the nucleus. This makes my valence electrons, <clears throat> well, makes them being held less tightly. They're held less tightly. And also, it enables my cloud to expand, my electron cloud. So as you go down a group, your atomic radius will increase. The cloud can expand. This increase in atomic radius, however, will mean that you'll need less ionization energy because your valence electrons are held less tightly. So ionization energy decreases. So as your atomic radius increases, your Ionization energy will decrease. If these are being held less tightly, then they're easier to take, meaning you'll need less energy, so ionization energy will decrease. Now let's look at the trends as we go across a period. So across the periodic table. So as you travel across the periodic table, now our reference is going to be from left to right. So from the left side of the periodic table, left view to the right. Each step across represents an increase in atomic number. So you're going from, let's say, we're starting at sodium, Na, which is number 11, to magnesium, number 12, 
to aluminum number 13, and 14, 15, 16, 17, etc. Each step across represents an increase in atomic number. With that, we also know it represents an increase in protons and electrons. So, well, I'll keep that the same. Here's my atomic nucleus. As I go across a period, so let's say that's energy level one. I'll talk about energy level number two. Remember, my periods represent my energy levels. So as I go at energy level number two, I start at sodium here. Then I go to magnesium. Then I go across the periodic table to the P block here, to aluminum, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, etc. I'm in the same energy level, but I'm just going and increasing my atomic number. When I increase my atomic number, I know I'm adding a proton and an electron to that atom. We're just going to focus mostly on the electrons in our picture, but we'll know up here that we're adding a proton as well. That does matter. So our electrons are being added to existing principal energy level, or to an existing principal energy level. So this is going to be one electron. Then I add another electron, it's going to be there. And I, as I go up to the next element, I'm adding another electron. As I add an electron, I'm also adding a proton. So the nucleus is becoming more positive, because I'm adding more protons to the nucleus with each step across the periodic table. I'm also adding another electron to the electron cloud. So the electron cloud is becoming more negative, so negative charges. The nucleus is becoming more positive as I add more protons and electrons. But my shielding for my inner electrons doesn't change. Nothing happens here. My shielding is still the same. So what this does is it increases the attraction between the protons and the electrons. And it pulls the electron cloud inward, making your atomic radius smaller. So as I add more negative charge on the outside, more positive charge on the inside, they become more and more attracted to one another, shrinking the atom. So as I go across the periodic table this way, from left to right, the atoms get smaller. So my atomic radius will decrease. This decrease happens because my effective nuclear charge, which is the pull that the nucleus has on the electrons, gets stronger. My effective nuclear charge increases, so my atomic radius is going to decrease. And because my atomic radius is getting smaller, I have an increase in effective nuclear charge, and this makes it harder to remove a valence electron. This is important. When it's harder to remove a valence electron due to this high effective nuclear charge, my ionization energy, i.e., will increase. An increase in ionization energy simply means that you need more energy in order to remove an electron. It becomes harder. So, gentlemen, please take notes and ask questions tomorrow. Adios.